You are watching the Polytechnic University of the Philippines College Entrance Test, also known as PUP Set, reviewer number 4, featuring questions on numerical ability. There are 10 questions featured in this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous PUP College Entrance Tests. Before you proceed, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click the bell icon to make sure you are notified of all new reviewers and other important updates. Let's begin. Question number 1. What is the median of this set of numbers? 1 2 3 4 5 6 a. 3. B. 3.5. C. 4. D. 10.5. The correct answer is B. 3.5. Let's first review your definitions of mean, median, mode, and range. The arithmetic mean is found by adding the numbers and dividing the sum by the number of numbers in the list. This is what is most often meant by an average. Median is the middle value in a list ordered from smallest to largest. The mode is the most frequently occurring value on the list. Range is the difference of the highest and lowest values in the list. We are being asked for the median so we need to find the middle value from the given list of numbers. There are 6 numbers in the list, so the median should be between 3 and 4. Therefore, the median is 3.5. We are given only 6 numbers and they are small consecutive numbers so finding the median should not be a problem. But what if the list is much longer involving bigger and more complicated looking numbers? Then we use the formula to find the median. There are actually two formulas to remember to find the median of any given set of numbers. If the number of values in the set is odd, use this formula. Median equals n plus 1, divided by 2, where n is the number of values in the set. If the number of values in the set is even, use this instead. Median equals the quantity n over 2, plus the quantity n over 2 plus 1, all over 2. There are 6 values in our given set so we use the second formula. 6 over 2, plus the quantity 6 over 2 plus 1, all over 2. We should arrive at 3.5 as our median. Take note that the result of the formula is not the value of the median number itself, but the position of the median number. That is, halfway between the positions of the third and fourth values in the given set. It just so happened that since our set is composed of six consecutive values from 1 to 6, the median position coincidentally is also the median value, which is 3.5. Kind of confusing? You will see what we mean with this when you encounter a median question with a different set of values in the given set. Question number 2. What is the probability of getting a sum of 12 after rolling a dice twice? A. 1 over 36 B. 1 over 12 C. 1 over 6 D. 1 fourth The correct answer is A. 1 over 36 A die has six faces, or surfaces, numbered 1 to 6. The probability of getting a 6 when rolled is 1 over 6. The probability of getting another 6 when rolled again should be the product of the two probabilities, that is 1 over 6 times 1 over 6. Therefore, the answer is 1 over 36. Question number 3. How many games are played in a season if there are 10 teams and each team plays another team only once? A. 10 factorial. B. 20. C. 30. D. 45. The correct answer is D, 45. To determine how many games are played in a season where each of the 10 teams plays every other team exactly once, we can use combinational mathematics. Here's the formula for combinational mathematics. ncr equals n factorial, over r factorial, times the quantity n minus r, factorial. Where? c is the number of combinations. n is the total number of objects in the set. R is the number of choosing objects from the set. Back to our given problem. Each game is played between two distinct teams. To find out the total number of games played, we need to calculate how many ways we can choose two teams out of 10 to play against each other. 
The number of ways to choose two teams from 10 is given by the combination formula 10C2, signifying that there are 10 teams, that is, n equals 10, and r is the number of teams to choose, which is 2 in this case. Calculating from the formula we should quickly arrive at 45 as our answer. Therefore, there are 45 games played in the season. Each of the 10 teams plays against each of the other 9 teams exactly once, resulting in a total of 45 games. Question number 4. If 10 cows can produce 20 liters of milk per week, how long will it take 2 cows to make the same amount? A. 3 weeks. B. 4 weeks. C. 5 weeks. D. 6 weeks. The correct answer is C, 5 weeks. To find out how long it will take 2 cows to produce the same amount of milk that 10 cows produce in a week, we start by understanding the milk production rate per cow. Given, 10 cows produce 20 liters of milk per week. First, calculate the milk production rate per cow. Milk production rate per cow equals 20 liters divided by 10 cows equals 2 liters per cow per week. Now, we need to find out how long it will take 2 cows to produce 20 liters of milk at the same rate. Let x be the time in weeks it takes for 2 cows to produce 20 liters of milk. The equation based on their rate of production is 2 cows times 2 liters per cow per week times t weeks equals 20 liters. Solving for t, we should quickly arrive at 5 as the answer. Therefore, it will take 5 weeks for 2 cows to produce 20 liters of milk, assuming they maintain the same rate of production as the 10 cows. Question number 5. A pair of shoes costs 5,000 pesos. It was initially being sold at a 20% discount, but an additional 15% was decreased from the discounted price. What is the price of the pair of shoes? A. 3,200 pesos. B. 3,400 pesos. C. 3,600 pesos. D. 4,000 pesos. The correct answer is B. 3,400 pesos. To determine the final price of the pair of shoes after the discounts, we need to calculate step by step. Step 1. Calculate the first discount. The shoes are initially discounted by 20%. This means the customer pays 80% of the original price. 80% of 5,000 peso is 4,000 pesos. Step 2. Calculate the second discount. After the first discount, an additional 15% is decreased from the discounted price. Therefore, the customer pays 85% of the price after the first discount. 85% of 4,000 pesos is 3,400 pesos. Therefore, the final price of the pair of shoes, after applying both discounts, is 3,400 pesos. Question number 6. City A is 10,000 miles away from City B. If a plane travels at an average speed of 200 miles per hour, how long will it take for it to travel from City A to City B? A. 5 hours. B. 20 hours. C. 45 hours. D. 50 hours. The correct answer is D. 50 hours. To find out how long it will take for the plane to travel from city A to city B, we can use the formula. Time equals distance over speed. The following values are given. Distance from city A to city B equals 10,000 miles. Speed of the plane equals 200 miles per hour. We then simply substitute the given values into the formula. T equals 10,000 miles over 200 miles per hour. We should quickly calculate T to be 50 hours. Therefore, it will take 50 hours for the plane to travel from city A to city B at an average speed of 200 miles per hour. Question number 7. Andrea has 400 pesos worth of 20 peso and 50 peso bills. If two more than two times the amount of the 50 peso bills is equal to the amount of 20 peso bills, what is the value of the 50 peso bills she has? A. 300. B. 250. C. 200. D. 100. The correct answer is C. 200 pesos. Let 
x be the number of 20 peso bills, and y the number of 50 peso bills. From the given problem, we have two conditions. First, Andrea has a total of 400 pesos. We can write this in equation form as 20x plus 50y equals 400, let's label this as equation 1. Second, 2 more than 2 times the amount of 50 peso bills equals the amount of 20 peso bills. In equation form, 2 plus 2y equals x. Let's label this as equation 2. Now, let's solve these equations step by step. Substitute x value from equation 2 into equation 1. 20 times the quantity, 2 plus 2y, plus 50y equals 400. From here we can solve for y and should quickly arrive at y equals 4. The problem is asking for the value of 50 peso bills that Andrea has, and since we denoted the number of 50 peso bills to be y, we need not solve for x anymore. From here we simply multiply the number of 50 peso bills, which is y equals 4, by the amount of each bill, which of course, is 50. We quickly arrive at our answer which is 200 pesos. You can validate if this is correct by solving for x, which is the number of 20 peso bills. And if we add the products of x and 20, and y and 50, we should have a total of 400 pesos. You may go ahead and make this validation if you want. Question number 8. Haruto uses 28 characters for his password, none of which is repeated. Assuming you know what the 28 characters are, how many possible combinations will you need to try if you are to guess his password? A. 27 factorial b. 28 factorial c. 28 raised to 28 d. impossible to compute The correct answer is b. 28 factorial. We know it is tempting to choose d. impossible to compute. But we can assure you that it is not impossible to compute. If Haruto's password consists of 28 unique characters and you are trying to guess it, you need to consider the number of possible permutations of these 28 characters. Each permutation represents a unique ordering of these characters, which could potentially be Haruto's password. The number of permutations of n distinct objects is given by n factorial. For 28 unique characters, the number of possible permutations p is p equals 28 factorial, which is our correct answer. What is 28 factorial? It is 3 followed by 27 digits. 3 octillion 48 septillion 883 sextillion 446 quintillion 117 quadrillion 138 trillion 940 billion 688 million 960 thousand. Therefore, if you are trying to guess Haruto's password and you need to consider every possible permutation of the 28 characters, you would need to try 28 factorial combinations. This number is extremely, and insanely, large, illustrating the challenge of guessing a password with such complexity. So although computing for the possible combinations out of 28 unique characters of Haruto's password is not impossible, it is definitely not a good idea to attempt to guess what his password is. Question number 9. 10 students in Section A play volleyball while 14 play basketball. If four of the students who play volleyball play basketball too, how many students play basketball only? A. 3 B. 7 C. 10 D. 13 The correct answer is C. 10. To determine how many students play basketball only, we first need to understand the overlap between the two groups, those who play volleyball and those who play basketball. Let V be the set of students who play volleyball. V the set of students who play basketball. From the problem we know that the total number of students who play volleyball is 10. And we know that the total number of students who play basketball is 14. We can determine the number of students who play both volleyball and basketball by intersecting the total number of students who play volleyball and the total number of students who play basketball. This results to 4. So the number of students who play both volleyball and basketball is 4. But we're looking for the number of students who play basketball only. The number of students who play basketball only can be found by subtracting the number of students who play both sports, which we just computed as 4, from the total number of basketball players, which is given as 14. We'll arrive at the correct answer, which is 10. 
Therefore, 10 students play basketball only. Question number 10. Paul is three years younger than Peter at the moment. When their ages are doubled, Peter is six years older than Paul. Finally, the current total of their ages right now is 17. Which of the following could be Paul's age right now? A. 7 years old. B. 15 years old. C. 17 years old. D. 20 years old. The correct answer is A. Paul's current age is 7 years old. Let's denote. X is Peter's current age. Y is Paul's current age. From the problem statement, we have three equations based on the given conditions. 1. Paul is 3 years younger than Peter. Y equals X minus 3. Let's label this as equation 1. 2. When their ages are doubled, Peter is 6 years older than Paul. 2X equals 2Y plus 6. Let's label this as equation 2. 3. The current total of their ages is 17. X plus Y equals 17. Let's label this as equation 3. Now, let's solve these equations step by step. Step 1. From equation 1, substitute Y equals X minus 3 into equation 3. We should arrive at X equals 10. This is Peter's age now. But we are supposed to be looking for Paul's age. Step 2. Now that we have Peter's age, which is x equals 10, let's substitute it back into equation 1 to find y, which is Paul's age now. Therefore, Paul's current age is 7. If you wish to verify, you can go ahead and substitute the computed ages of Peter and Paul into equation 2. You should end up with 20 on both sides of the equation, which would indicate that we came up with the correct current ages of Peter and Paul. You have just completed watching the PUP College Entrance Test Reviewer number 4, featuring questions on numerical ability. Check out more related review videos and playlists on our channel. If you find this useful, please like and share. Leave a comment to share your thoughts or questions regarding this reviewer or any particular part of it. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to Review Central and click the bell button to get notified of all future reviewers and updates. Like and follow us on your favorite social media platforms. Good luck to your forthcoming PUP College entrance test and we look forward to congratulating you for passing the exam.